Hello and welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you have been following my secret garden tea party setup because in this video I'll be sharing with you one of the most fun and unique DIY projects that I've come up with for my upcoming party. You can't have a secret garden without a secret entry, right? So come on in and I'll show you all the details of all the things I created to make this happen. I was really inspired by these images that I found online, especially this one with the beautiful stone columns and the iron type of gate. And I then went searching for actual gates online and actually these are actually some that you can actually purchase through Wayfair. You never know where inspiration can come from. I even found inspiration from a greeting card. And also this is a door that I found while walking at Lowe's. I knew I could probably use some Dollar Tree materials to make this happen, but I finally settled on this garden border which I know many YouTubers have used to create amazing things, so I figured I'd give it a go. Okay, let me show you some of the materials that I'm considering for my gate. Uh, remember, I want to create like a grand entry so you feel like you're entering a secret garden. So I, I would going to reuse this columns, which you may remember from my Oscar party. So I'm going to repurpose them. You bet. Um, of course, I am going to go ahead and paint them. And I wanted to give them like a little bit of a stone treatment, probably sponge on some with, with sponges to make it look like it's made out of stones. So that's kind of the idea there. Now for the tops, I think it'd be nice if they had like a, I guess they call them capstones, what they call them. So that's where the styrofoam comes in. I was able to find this at Lowe's. This whole sheet is like $7. And as you can see, it's, it's something seven something. It's, it's a nice thickness, but I want it to be even thicker. So I'm gonna put two of them, one on top of the other. I'm gonna cut it to size to kind of go around it. Now, like in my inspiration picture, every nice little capstone has like a detail on top. So I was lucky to find these little cages. These are actually from Daiso, a little Japanese store. Everything is $1.75. I saw this and it reminded me a lot of my inspiration picture. So the idea is I got, I got two of them for each side. And if you put them together, you end up with a nice dome. If you can tell but basically that's going to be the idea i can probably use zip tie that zip tie them together and then he needed a finial right so i went looking around daiso and i found this little guy and there you go it's going to be a finial i'm going cute well they look better when it's not that crooked <laughs> and then i'm going to paint my arch black so that i all look like it's an iron gate okay and since every good secret garden gate deserves an actual door I wanted to try to kind of make the illusion it's actually made of wrought iron. So this is the thought so far. I'm gonna take one by twos and I'm gonna create a frame for each of the doors. Based on my other inspiration pictures, I'm gonna use dowels in between to look as if these kind of elements are connecting. It's all gonna be painted black, just like the plastic, and it should all blend in. So that's kind of the idea. And then I'll come up with some kind of uh, nice handle and those would be my doors for my secret garden gate. Okay, well today we're gonna start tackling the creation of our little secret garden gate. And I'm gonna start with the columns because um, I need those to dry for the first coat before I do the second coat. So the first thing is just to remove that paper, which I purposely did really easily. And I got some spray paint that, um, like a base kind of warm gray color that I'm gonna spray this with. And then after that, I'm gonna spray paint the, the arch in the black. I got some black. So, the Let's idea. Um, I happen to have the cinder blocks that I use for all kinds of things. And um, I think it'd be nice to give some stability to my columns that I'm gonna use. You know, you can kind of see in there what it looks like. I think it's gonna be good first. Okay, ready to spray paint. This is what I'm gonna be using. It's a chalky finish and the color is mink, I believe. Yeah. So, um, and I noticed that you have to shake it a little bit more than your traditional paint because I think it's, it might be actually shock paint so it's actually quite thick so let's give it a go the coverage is really good I'm happy about that 
Okay, well definitely one uh, can of paint was enough for one column. I got two, but um, I might need a third since I also wanted to paint the stones that are gonna go on top, if you may remember. So I got several colors here. I do have some uh, chalk paint in white. I have some uh, chalk paint in mineral and truffle. And I also have some black if I need it. So what I'm thinking, is to basically put a little bit of each one and kind of mix it up. Okay, so let's see. Okay, right, I'm gonna start here in the, in the corner here. There's one. So let me go ahead and this time I'm gonna try a different way. I'm gonna see if I put the paints in the big plate and I combine them there and then use the whole sponge in there. I'm gonna try that. Okay, that's pretty loaded. I'll load a little bit there. That should be a little bit better. Yeah, that might be a better method, even though it doesn't look right. So make sure that you align it and that you give it a little bit of grout situation. Yeah, there we go. Like I can always go over it later if I don't like the color, you know? Like I'm seeing that I have too much white in this one now. I want to add a little bit of more of my mineral. shape actually it should be like a longer brick yeah maybe I'll do that I'll make them all a little longer so they have more of a brick shape there you go happy accidents well what do you guys think the hair is the painted side I'm not even finished done just to those two sides and that's what it was looking like before pretty goody huh it's fun you should try okay I'm now working on the top for my columns as I show you my planning video these are actually planters there were two of them to have so I've joined them together with little zip ties and that's gonna be my little dome now every dome needs a little finial so I also found these at the Daiso at the uh, Japanese store they had this little uh, ring on top, you know, because it's meant for hanging a plant. So I went ahead and snapped that off and that could probably use that for something somewhere um, along the way. So now I'm trying to figure out how to best attach this to this, because this is my finial, right? And I'm thinking, you know, I don't need this wood base because I really want it to look like it's all made of iron. So it has some actual screws in there. I think I can just take them off and once I have that, I'll be able to probably do another more zip ties to kind of tie this together. Okay, this is the piece of foam that I got to put on top of the columns to give kind of that idea that it's like a little stack of uh, stones. 
So since I got my dome already made, I sort of figure out kind of how much overhang this will have. And, and then what I'm gonna do is to make it look thicker than it is because I really want it to look thicker. I'm gonna cut some strips and those are gonna be kind of hanging down like that. And the fun thing is that I, I did spray paint it with the same color as the columns. And even though it sort of eats into the foam a little bit, I think for my purposes, for it to look like stone, it's perfect. So I'm happy about that. Okay, so now it's time to assemble the second uh, column topper, I'm calling it. Uh, this is basically what I did for the last one. I cut the foam to pieces and I joined them and I put a little bit of caulking just to see the holes. And I still have, a, I mean, the gap would be covered up. So after all that, I'm gonna sand it a little bit. I'm gonna spray paint it, see what happens, and I might then end up sponging some texture on it, depending on how, how weird it looks. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe kind of similar to what I'm gonna do to the actual column. So basically, all I'm doing here, is just like I did the other one. The longer pieces go here, and the shorter pieces go inside. So I'm gonna do the short pieces first. And I'm working upside down, so let's see if there's a better side than the other. Maybe this one. Just with hot glue, that's all we're using here. Okay, so to fill my gaps, because as you can see, as careful as I thought I was being, I ended up with uh, gaps some places. This is what I'm using. I'm using this kind of a fast dry acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. I like it because it's fast drying and also because you can paint it, which is what we need to have. Okay, so on my uh, second column topper uh, dries, I'm gonna see how much I can stand off of this. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it or not. So I think this one's ready to be base coated with the spray paint. And I'm eager to see how much it's gonna, what's gonna happen. Okay, for painting, this is what I'm gonna be using, which is the same paint that I use on the columns. And I'm propping it up so it's not completely on the floor with some other leftover pieces of my foam. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, it's not even dry yet and you can start seeing how it's gonna create this texture. Of course, what I'm not gonna like is the fact that uh, it's very obvious that it has that caulking. So I'm gonna have to look into what I can do about that, but I really love the texture on the sides. Okay, so this is uh, kind of how it's looking. As you can see there, that's the actual texture of the foam. And when you paint it, it gives you that little pebbly thing, right? Which is good, but as we know, we have a lot of rough edges on the sides, you know, where I have to make my cuts. So this is what I decided to do. I have two of these little tubs of the cheap spackling from Dollar Tree. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna apply it everywhere where it really needs smoothing, almost like applying it everywhere. And then I'm gonna paint it. And also that I'm gonna use this sponge to sort of smooth it out so you don't see like lines, but it looks like, a, again, the texture. So yeah, I'm excited. That should work pretty good. See, if I do that, it's just gonna look like when it is smeared. So I need to smear it. And it could, I could look pretty thin, which is the thing. I also wanna stretch it. Like a popcorn ceiling. <laughs> if you remember popcorn ceiling, it's kind of a texture made with plaster. There it is, all spackled up. Didn't take much time at all, but it sure took the whole entire container pretty much. Okay, so I left this dry from yesterday. 
I even did the bottom a little bit. And I think I'm gonna do a very light sanding on the top and then we're gonna paint them kind of like what we did yesterday with us with the columns. So they Okay, now we're gonna paint these puppies. I did a little small sanding, I mean small, I mean uh, light sanding. And just to get any loose stuff, I think once I start painting it, it's gonna look pretty even. So a sponge, just like the same one I used for the columns, uh, a cellulose sponge. And I'm gonna use the same three colors, at least what's left of them, boy, I'm very low. Um, the truffle. And uh, what I decided with the last one is that, <clears throat> The nice thing is that you don't have to be very careful how you place them, really. But you do have to think of proportions a little bit. So my brown and my white are my accent colors. So those are the ones that really pop. Uh, so I want the least amount of those. And then um, I want a little bit more of the main color, which in my case, my main color is... Uh, uh, mineral. Which I don't have too much left, but we'll see how far we can go with this. Should be okay. It doesn't take that much paint. You'd be amazed how much you can make it last. But in spite of all that, I mean, I almost kind of finished that my two smaller jars are almost all gone. Okay, so this is how I did it last time. And like I say it worked pretty good. So the sponge is wet, so it's very and I literally went like that, turn it around, get it all the colors in there. And at first it's going to be pretty goopy, right? You know, if it's too goopy, you can always kind of blot it just to see where you're at. Now the difference here is that it's a little, it's even easier because I'm not going for the, what I'm going for is really color. But I want the different kinds of colors to pop in and out. and then I can blend. This stuff is very good for blending. See, I can see there's a little bit too much brown. The brown really kind of stands out because it's such a dark color. And it's kind of nice maybe for the corners. And that's it basically. Okay, now it's time to paint the arch and I'm gonna paint it black, as I mentioned. Um, this is what I got for it. It's basically a fusion all-in-one paint and primer with a texture finish and it's supposed to be texture black. So I'm also gonna paint the wood. Once I do the, the frame that I need to do for the actual doors, we'll be painted with the same thing. So hopefully it will look sort of like a Rhode Island gate. Okay, let's see how it goes. The doors and picturing you know that I'll need to make a frame out of these one by twos. And at first I was gonna keep it straight on top, but then I realized, you know what? I could probably just jigsaw a little curve and make the two sides the same. So I'm gonna try to do that and see how that works. Okay, this is the progress we have so far. So with one by twos, I made um, a bit of a, somewhat of a frame because remember the top's gonna be arch but I'm not gonna worry making that part because I'm just gonna fake it out with some of my my uh, trellises. I did cut that little curve there so it fits kind of nicely on the curve of the arch. The arch is now painted black. And okay, this is where we're at in terms of the this design of the gate. I've played with several ideas. Um, again, putting a lot of one by twos across, and I really thought I was gonna go with that, but the more I saw it, the kind of, the more I kind of didn't like it. So I think the new approach is gonna be a little lighter. Maybe I only put four crossbars instead of, um, I think I have, I have six here all together. Okay, so this next step is to fill the holes and do have a little extra holes and gaps on my wood and then I can sand it and then I can spray paint it and then I can assemble the entire fence because I want to spray paint it all together that way even the plastic gets spray paint and that way it'll kind of match the wood hopefully it will all look like wrought iron we'll soon shall see so I'm trying a new thing this time this plastic wood thing 
um, it's supposed to be three times stronger. Not that I'm too worried about it. This is only going to be used for a few moments, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Oh, interesting. They put the label upside down. <laughs> anyway, so let's go and keep on with that. Guess what? Good news. I looked through my stash and hey, I found some old hinges and I happen to have four of these. I used them for something else in the past. That would be perfect. And I also, this one used to be in some cabinet upstairs, I believe. So I have a ton of these. So I'll probably spray paint them all black to, to go with my, I may change my mind and change the color later, but woohoo, I need to buy those. Okay, ready for sanding. Okay, I'm gonna put the supports now for the the garden fences. Uh, as you can see, I basically just have hot glue them together in this configuration. And um, I decided that uh, a long dowel on the back kind of makes it look a little bit more real. So I'm gonna measure here uh, the length of my dowel and I'm gonna cut it with my handy dandy uh, miter shears, which cut everything. like butter and i gotta do that three times okay let's get some glue on on that little channel i'm trying to be pretty generous with it just want to make sure that dowel sticks nice I'm stick the dowel and stick it in that channel Okay, so this is going to be the hard work for the gate. After much thinking, I decided to go ahead and paint it gold to match this one, which I already have. My next step, even though as much as I like this one in that rust color that it had, it's kind of a nice color. Um, I kind of wanted them all to match and kind of be like a little jewelry on the gate. Everything else is going to be black. Um, so, to make them even more like this, I'm actually now gonna give them like a little uh, white wash kind of thing. I'm gonna brush some white paint and see how that works out. Okay, so here we are. Um, I don't have any uh, uh, chalk paint of white, but I might even try putting a little bit of this green because again, the one we're trying to match sort of has a little greenish tint to it. So I might try a teeny teeny bit of that and I have this white. This is from the Dollar Tree, so it's very liquidy. But again, for this in my work, hopefully it will stick. Um, okay, so I think the best thing is to start with the green. If I can open it, oh my God. I got a foam brush. I also have this kind of makeup sponges and also have this little pouncer. So we'll, maybe I'll start with something a little more basic. Maybe we start with the hinge. See what happens, see if we get some color to the hinge. gives it a more muted kind of feel to it without being overpowering. Okay everyone, so now it's a matter of uh, putting the doors on, which is easier said than done sometimes. Putting doors can also oh, be so tricky. So what's gonna be here? Then 
Okay, so here's the gate pretty much where it's gonna go. I'm still trying to figure out some details. Um, I got the hinges. I decided to go ahead and paint them gold. And I also bought a third set of the hinge for the bottom. I only have four of those, so I bought two more. Now, for the closure, and this is where things get interesting because I have to get a little crafty. Um, I had gotten this, uh, it's really a coat hook, but I love the look that it actually looks like a key and a kind of a, a very traditional scotian kind of thing. Scotian is a hard word to say, but I said it. Anyway, uh, so, I think this is loose, which is fine. It's just the screw is very loose on the back, but I think I'm gonna play with it and have my, my guests actually turn the key as they come in through the gate. So the question is how to place it, right? I've thought of several things. Let me get you a little closer. Okay, so this is the idea. This is pretty much kind of the center of the door where the closure will go. And um, as I mentioned, I got this little key kind of situation here with a discussion, which I painted to match my handle, which I already had. It's like a leaf handle, which I thought would be really appropriate. And so they're all the same gold, the hinges and all the, all the hardware is the same color. So where to place it, right? Traditionally, you probably have the actual key on one side and the other side is a handle. I, I thought that looked a little lopsided in my case. I wanted it to look a little bit more uh, center. So I thought, well, maybe I'll put it like this. And I'm gonna do is just basically glue it on one side because we don't wanna close the gate for good. And I have my key, my, my guess, turn the key, <laughs> whichever way it kind of goes just for effect more than anything. And then I have the handle and the handle will go here. I happen to have two shorter versions of the same handle, which happen to fit here pretty good. So it's gonna be one there and one there. And that's actually gonna be the handle to open the doors. Now the smooth opening of the door, that's part of the thing I'm still trying to figure out. But, um, but for now, I think I can definitely at least attach this one side and start attaching my handles because I want to make sure that they fit nicely in there, okay? But I have one more little thing to think about. Okay, so here's my discussion with my kind of fake key. So when I install it this way, as you see, I'm going to have the two holes where the screws are supposed to go, which I'm not using. So I consider several things. Um, I consider a wood bead, which I have a ton of. I consider buttons, which I have a ton of, you know, gold buttons or something like that. I can always spray paint it the same color. I, I still have a little bit of that color. But ultimately, I think I'm going to go with these. These are actually thumbtacks. Not, well, actually, they're upholstery tacks. That's really what they are, they're not thumbtacks. They're upholstery tacks. And uh, I might actually go ahead and also brush them up with the, with the spray paint. I think they look the most kind of natural as something that would be there at the end. It just makes that look a little bit more finished. And they'll stay on probably with, I'll probably just hot glue them on. That's probably what I'll do. Okay, so now we're ready to put our little escutcheon and key situation. I went ahead and applied some of this landscape glue, this landscape uh, Loctite glue that could be used outdoors in case I decide to put this outside. So now, um, again, I only put on half of it because that's all we need. And in fact, I'm gonna open the doors a little bit to make sure I don't get any on the other door. Basically, yeah, it's gonna go in the middle. Okay, so I cleaned up uh, my mess a little bit. I painted up because I did put way too much of the of the glue, but now it's in place. Now it's time to put my hardware. So I'm trying that little tape method. I don't know if you've seen it where you basically use a tape and then you make the holes with it and then you know where it goes. <laughs> Let's keep finger crossed, you know, that it'll work for me because I am notorious for messing up handles. Looks like something so easy, but it's, I do mess it up. Anyway, so according to this, I don't want it too low. So I might have to drill through my little plastic fencing, so I hope that comes out okay. Although, one thing I have to think about is that the screw might not be long enough. Okay, everyone. Well, today we're gonna finish this gate and decorate it and do the columns and everything else put together. Um, the first thing is like, I did mess up. I, I was... 
I was afraid of putting this on, as I mentioned, because I always miss, and I did miss. So I have some extra holes, to, you know, that I need to fill and paint over. So that's the first thing to do. Yeah, me. Okay, so can't see them right now, but there's two little holes there, one there and one there. Um, that I basically, over the original holes that I did, which I did wrong. So I need to fill them up. I'm gonna use this plastic wood, which is it's nice and strong, but it's smelly like crazy. It's very, very chemically. Um, it's the first time trying it out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep using it or not. Yeah, this especially is too big to get in there. I'm gonna have to use my finger. Just the back of it, I had to fill the holes, and of course it made a mess with all that filling, so I need to sand all that off and repaint it. We can make mistakes as long as we know how to fix them. It's okay, it's all fixable. Okay, so I came up with a new idea. Basically, I wanted these planters to be the support for my columns, um, for the front of my trellis, or my arch, I should say, really, is really what it is. They're a little short. I would like them to be a little taller. And I couldn't find a pot that was the right size that wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg because I needed two of them and that um, would be also the diameter wouldn't be too big. Um, so I thought, well, you know, all I want is the height. How about if I stack two pots together, which is something I've done many times before. I was able to find these at Target, only $10, and they're nice and simple. So the idea is that I can stack them together like so. I could put the post through because they have a little hole that will line up. Oh, there's a hole. There's a hole. I make sure the holes line up. And then if I spray paint the whole thing black, which is the same color as the fence, uh, they will look like one thing. And they will also blend a little bit with, uh, with the arch uh, that I have. So that's the plan right now. And for gluing them, I'm going to use this. I happen to have this landscape kind of a uh, Loctite construction adhesive since I may end up putting this outside in the yard later so might as well have a good adhesive so we'll see how that goes Okay, now I'm figuring out where I want the gate to be with the columns. I still have to install the columns properly. And also you'll see here my, my pots, which I have to insert that front tube into the pot and I, I'm gonna actually plant them with soil and rocks and stuff like that. So that they are, they serve as a little bit of stability when opening the door, at least that's the theory so far. If it doesn't work, we'll have to do other things. But for now, kind of this is where I am. So uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Now, uh, the very tricky part now is putting this, this tube inside of there. And my, my goal is to really try to insert it through that little hole. I align both holes, you know, there's a pot river um, inverted, I want the top, and the idea is to align that hole, right? Um, the columns are not in place yet. I'll be installing that in a sec. So I'm come in I wanted to kind of be head on this is the front door here so I'll be coming this way and like First, I'm going to put the tops. 
because right now the calls are loose. So, here's a little closer. See how they turn out. Pretty good, huh? Oh, I'm so strong. <laughs> anyway, okay. So I'm gonna glue them upside down so it's easier to kind of figure out what you're doing that way. And of course, then we're gonna do the fun part, which is all the decoration. Okay, so now in terms of the columns, this is glued on now. And the last part is to put my little, my little top right here. Um, and I um, need to center it both ways. It has like a little nubby thing, because I guess that's how I used to hang it when it was kind of a basket. So I'm thinking I may have to kind of uh, use the hot glue to kind of uh, kind of burn the foam a little bit. See if it'll help me kind of uh, First, I want to mark it in place, make sure it's properly centered. Now that I've centered it, let me just mark what I want this thing to be. Because this foam is really dense. I thought it would be able to puncture with it, but it's not quite letting me do that. It springs back quite a bit. This is not your typical, this is not styrofoam. I don't know what kind of foam it is, but it's a different kind. Okay. Okay, so let me show you what happens now. I got this little black, this is a black wood, which I happen to have from a backyard project. So I'm putting those there so they can protect my floor. Because the next thing, again, and this is all about stability, is I'm going to put a cinder block. There's the cinder block, and now the column goes over it. And now I can move it around without worrying about scratching my floor. So the same thing on the other side, I'm putting the board first then the cinder block and then once I put the column I can adjust if I need to. Okay and I moved it so that the black board is basically all the way towards the back so you don't see it in the front and then that gave me an idea what do I do with that little space here? We have a plan but guess what I happen to have these two little lanterns I look at. Don't they look perfect there? It's like they were meant to be and they have a like a battery candle that flickers and looks like a candle. So those will be perfect. Okay, so now we get to plant the planters. The first thing I'm gonna put on the bottom, it's a lot of this white rock. I want it to be heavy. Okay, as you can see, I, I filled it about a good two inches on the bottom. Then I'm gonna put some soil and some plants. Okay, so I finished the planters. These are real plants, <laughs> and I camouflage them or surround them with fake plants because I want to have that vegetation feel. I try to keep the two planters kind of similar. I put this fake tree that I have there, and I'm gonna put a few vines on the arch, especially the bare part on top is mostly what I'm interested in decorating. Again, there's plenty going on, so not that we need a ton, but. It's almost there. Okay, this is the pet piece of artificial grass that I still have left over. And I'm gonna try to cut it uh, to kind of make a little path to go into my secret garden. So I had cut a curve initially that was gonna go over there, but my husband didn't want it. So ended up being rejected as being on the side of the house for a while. That's why I got so dirty. But um, basically what I'm gonna try to do is to try to cut a, something that sort of looks like a path that I'm gonna have like from the door to the to the from the main door to the door of the gates as close as I can get to either either one because of course I have to allow for clearances for the for the doors to open. So that's the plan so far. This kind of material I learned from the last time is a little easier cutting it from the back instead of the front. So I'm gonna make myself like a little marking line with this thing that I happen to have just so that I sort of can follow the curvature 
kind of thing over here. Okay, let's see how it goes. Gotta cut it like that. Now I've only cut this in straight lines. I never try cutting curves, so <laughs> hopefully it won't be as bad as I'm fearing. So we'll see. Fortunately, cuts really easily. And there it is, all cut out. I give it a bit of a of a rinse since I'm taking it inside and had some dirt underneath. So I can't wait to put it in place. You know what it looks like. Okay, everyone, here is the finished gate. As you can see, I've put some flowers all around, but I didn't go too crazy. I put some more of the vines, and I also added some of my existing kind of fake plants to kind of dress it up a little bit more all around. You can see the columns, and you can see the door, and you could see that I also added a little path of... Uh, of basically artificial grass that I had. It's kind of fun. It just kind of leads you there more than anything. And then I had the the mirror image of the same, so I put it over there. So um, so let's go inside. This open out this way. And I have also added some lanterns. I have a few hanging and and here's the rest of the little path. And you've seen this before. This is basically the table. But the important thing I wanted to show you guys this time is the gate. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. My idea of doing the plants and the pots really works in terms of stabilizing the, the door so I can actually open it. And you see that I had to pull the, the grass back so that I could actually open the door without hitting the grass. So there you go. Hope you like it. Thanks so much for joining me in this journey as my secret garden tea party continues to take shape to be ready for my guests. If you have not checked out my previous videos in the series, make sure you check them out to see all the details about my tablescape and gazebo. And don't forget to subscribe because I still have two more videos in this series coming. I'll be showing you how I set up the small table in my kitchen for the crafting portion of my party, as well as a few other finishing touches here and there. So see you soon! Thank you.